my name is Simon and this is how to build a racing car. The Formula V category uses an old Volkswagen Beetle drivetrain, that is its engine and gearbox. The Formula V is quite a bit smaller than the road car that the parts come from and with the majority of the usable mounting points around the gearbox, most of the supports will have to reach back past the engine to support it. To complicate things further, some of the supports can only be bolted on with the gearbox separate from the engine. The only choice then for mounting the drivetrain to the chassis is to use one or more subframes to bridge the gap between the chassis and the available mounting points. I went with two individual subframes that both attach to the front and back of the gearbox. The lower one also provides supports for the rear leading arm suspension while the upper one provides the mounts for the upper suspension components, roll hoop brace, rain light and rear bodywork mount. I'll cover the suspension in another video since it's quite a large subject but I'll say for now that the suspension around the springs and dampers heavily influenced the design of these subframes. There wasn't much room around the suspension for braces from the chassis mounts to the rear of the gearbox which would have been much more efficient strength wise so I had to compensate by making the construction out of larger and heavier steel sections. The subframes provided all but one of the mounts for the drivetrain. On top was the mount for the roll hoop brace, in the middle two mounts both using the upper subframe. Below were two more mounts using the lower subframe. At the front of the engine there was one more mount which passes through a mounting point on the engine itself without an adapter. Starting with the upper subframe, we cut the box sections of steel. Being a box section it was very easy to achieve the correct dimensions. Next the box sections for the bell crank mounts and the main spine were welded together. The front cutouts get marked up. The curve is cut using a hole saw, the remainder is cut along the marked line using an angle grinder. The upper subframe is mounted to the gearbox at the front and rear, necessitating a removable adapter. A thick plate with four permanent bolts was attached to the rear of the spine, an adapter plate then connected it to the gearbox. At the front, two smaller gusseted mounting points were used. These were assembled separate to the subframe. Then they were tacked in place during a trial assembly of the subframe. The welds were finished off on the vise. Mounts were assembled off the frame which would serve as the chassis connection, then welded to the frame. and two mounts are welded into the sides for mounting the bell cranks. At the front of the subframe, the cutout has a mount inserted which will eventually be used by a rocker for the suspension. The removable clamp was made out of four simple laser cut metal pieces. These will put the rocker in double shear rather than single shear, stiffening the whole assembly. More metal gets welded to the subframe for attaching the brace, stiffening the joint and mounting the camber control cable pulley. Finally, the bodywork mount is added to the adapter plate for the rear of the upper subframe. This will also stiffen the connection. And that's the construction of the upper subframe complete. Now moving on to the lower subframe. This was thankfully much simpler than the upper subframe to construct. I started this off by making the rectangular section which attached to the gearbox at the front. This was mounted by four bolts that couldn't be inserted while the engine and gearbox were connected. Two smaller box sections were then cut which connected the rectangular section to two mounted plates on the rear of the gearbox. Assembling this was easy, I just bolted the individual pieces to the gearbox, then tacked the two box sections between them all. I completed the welds on the bench now that everything was tacked in place. 
We did many trial assemblies along the way to make sure that no issues crept in. You can see here that the upper subframe isn't complete. It was actually built piece by piece over six months while the lower subframe came together over a much shorter period of time. I added to each according to the design only as I really needed to. Last to go in on the lower subframe were the chassis connectors. Bolts would pass through these into threaded inserts in the chassis tubes. I also attached capping plates on the lower subframe to finish it off. One last piece while we're working in this area. There was a mount added below the rear subframe which would hold the bodywork, under tray, exhaust collector and, at least early in the design, the rear rain light which at that stage was going to be a horizontal LED strip. I had to change to the upper round rain light when the rule clarification was issued which enforced the requirement to use certain FIA certified LED rain lights. I was able to buy a round rain light and attach it to the upper subframe instead. Like so much else on this car, I had the parts laser cut and simply welded them together to form this part. Finally we need to sandblast the parts and paint them to protect the surface. That's the drivetrain subframes complete. This will allow the chassis to be completed, extending rearwards to connect to these newly available mounts. It also provides all of the various rear suspension mounting points which will allow those to be completed as well. If you want to see more videos as they come out, feel free to subscribe and also leave a like or comment to let me know what you think so far. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.